Night Attack is brought to you by all of our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash night attack. Subscribe today and get a pre-show and after show early. We had a great pre-show today talking about Josie's eyebrows. Check it out. Also, thank you to our friends over at doghousesystems.com for powering this show and our stream. We're using their great computers. Get yourself a free SSD drive when you get a computer at Doghouse at doghousesystems.com slash V slash Rogue. Use promo code Rogue at checkout. You'll get that free SSD. Here's what happened last time on Night Attack number 328. Thanks to our good friend, I see you. But really, it's her thick set. Like thick she's thick. Set. Well, I, I know, but but set of what? Is it a yeah. set of cake? Buns? <laughs> Is it a yeah. set yeah. Of... It's the cake. The, 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 the Cheesecake? Cake set? Yeah. Like, well, well, hopefully not. Is that a... <laughs> like oh, okay. she's got a she's got a donk. donk. She's carrying a trailer. Yeah. Put yeah. a glass. Put a stick of glass on it. Ass so big it could have won the horse awards. God, oh, we're talking about a butt. <laughs> you guys could just say butt. You don't have to say butt on each show. So sad. This airy model refuses to apologize for his long balls. <laughs> oh my god! Made so much better by the Wii music. Hello, you beautiful bastards, you demon hordes of the internet. It is live on Tuesday night, and I am here in Austin, Texas, which means it is go time for Night Attack. Joined, as always, by my BFF in no way, Kate is J-R-Y, Justin Robert Young, also Bryas Castillo, also, yep. holy crap, um, uh, 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 patrons already know yeah. what we just experienced, but for all those who are not initiated, whoo, what a pre-show. Well, that was a white knuckler. Uh, uh, Brian, you brought your daughter on who then pitched live on the internet in front of hundreds and listened to by thousands uh, uh, that she wants to shave half her eyebrows. And uh, let me just say, what started out as something that I personally thought was a far more controlled, fun dad and daughter banter only escalated in a high stakes family scenario that had political intrigue and left some producers of this show screaming QAnon. So if you are not, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, basically, basically we called Bonnie and she just noped out. She was just like, just no, she gave you a patron, a patron, a patron, a patron, a patron, a patron. If you're not, yeah, patreon.com slash night attack. Go ahead and do it and get into it. Holy crap. Uh, uh, Brian. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. This is going to be the uh, uh, the last show. There's going to be a pattern interruption in my location next week. Uh, by which you mean you will not be in your location. I will not be in my studio. Most likely, I will not be in my studio. Yeah, no. we're 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 back to the halcyon days of um, at least fifty percent of us traveling on erratic schedules and us figuring out how to make everything happen. Uh, we, we talked a bit about this. I, I think mostly, I don't think we've talked about this on the main show. I think we've only talked about it on happy hour and in the post show, but basically in the post show last week, you pointed out that happy hour has been existing specifically because we all got thrown in jail. And as long as we're in jail, we should be, you know, maybe playing D and D or something. And so we, we figured out something to do, but now here we are almost three months later. And some of us are being let out of jail to go do things like cover presidential elections and stuff. And, and, and we're back to the days of, 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 of travel. And, and, and we're lucky if we even have, that three hour block that has been night attack and, and even yeah, that and might have to shift around a bit. Well, and, and I think that we'll be able to talk about the, that even a little bit more later in the show. Cause uh, I know people have mailed in stuff. For We've got a, a lot of segment oh, feedback yeah, on so that. It was, we've got plenty. We have plenty a, of that conversation. A but, surprise to the producer who doesn't listen to happy hour to see a lot, a lot of very good feedback. <laughs> on good, that. Well, well, and, 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 and I, I, I don't want to push everything forward, but basically we had a moment where all of a sudden I realized like, like I, it had never occurred to me that there would ever be an end to this this uh this um indian summer that we were experiencing and and just even realizing that we're not immortal was a big moment for me and uh and we've had a lot of really really good discussions and, and we'll get to the feedback later but uh but I, but i thought i thought it was really really good yeah yeah no i mean uh, uh i don't think that there will be an interruption to my presence in the happy hour at all throughout 
this particular situation, which is me going to cover the Trump rally in Tulsa on Saturday. But the reason why I will not uh, uh, be here on next Tuesday, a week from today, is because I got another hotel here so I can wait out uh, uh, test results that I will go get uh, as soon as I get back. Yeah, so um, we've heard various reports from our, our fine, fine chat realm about um, whether or not like the one hour test was different or more more or less reliable than the three day test or whatever. Like what, what what's your game plan right now? Right now the plan is uh, I am going to get back Sunday night. I'm going to go uh, to a hotel Sunday night. I am then going to go get a test Monday. And then I have that hotel Monday night, Tuesday night, and then I can extend it into Wednesday night. Last time I got a test at this same place, I took the test on Monday and I got the results on Thursday morning. And you're feeling how about all of this? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, Brian, you and I have made a living living our lives in public. Yep, 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 yep. Uh and to be totally honest, as a jaded old curmudgeon, uh considering we've been doing this for over a decade and we've shared personal secrets, we've gone through uh tumultuous situations yep, personally. Yep, yep. Like I I I watched my dad come back to life my strange father come back to life in a mysterious and Had haunting children situation. born and, and remember when we made callie into a prop uh, uh, uh for, for for the baby jesus <laughs> for yeah. our nativity scene and then we we literally named i gave my youngest daughter a novelty name from that that's a, a from reference the show, to a show right the, yeah yeah and this is like, this is a bond that we have with the audience. This is an ability for us to share stuff uh, that we will undoubtedly be canceled for at some point within the next two years. But in the meantime, I will say that this scenario has been probably the most turbulent that I can remember about making a decision and living it in public. Like there is a... I will say a good natured concern from many people uh, uh, that they're afraid of me going into this scenario. I acknowledge that there is danger to it, right? Like I will not say that it is not, not without danger, although the ability to go there and be somebody in those scenarios is often the most newsworthy. That's where my instincts are. Uh, but man, is it hard? It's hard to have people that you know care about you on the internet talk about how this is a horrifying and selfish mistake and and you're going to you're going to screw everything up. Yeah, I I I wish I had a simple answer for you. Um uh, uh if 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 I wasn't feeling it as much as you were, I'd make some coy jokes about you know, at least you're going first, better you than me, all those, you know, but, yeah. but, but it's like, but the truth is like, um, uh, it's, it's just a roll of the dice that you happen to have a reason to go out first. Right. I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, yes. If, 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 if the context is which of, which of us between me and you go out first, then yes, it was definitely a roll of the dice to see who it would be. But, but, but I guess, um, I, I, I think our wives are fairly aligned um, and, and without getting too personal or whatever, uh, I, I, I think both of our wives, like I can't go to the fucking taco joint across the street. Um, not that this is an equivalence, but, but you have, so, so here I am bravely, even though they're open and right there, they're right there next to the, Chick-fil-A, but where do I go? I go to the stupid Chick-fil-A every single time because I can't sit and just play a little bit of Hearthstone, have a chicken taco. It would be amazing. Whatever. Uh, false equivalency. Uh, but meanwhile, <laughs> you have like, all of a sudden lustful, like, like a lustful uh, a false equivalency. That is that was that was a picturesque. You could feel the erotic tension between you and the torches. My my point is is that. I have no justification to go across the street and play Hearthstone at the 
perfectly open, perfectly right there, Torchies, uh, because uh, I, I know my wife would prefer that I not go. And I'm going to guess, and hopefully I'm not overstepping, I'm going to guess sure. all things being equal, that actually would prefer that you not hop into a giant metal tube with hundreds yes. of other people and go to another part of the country and then go to a place where everybody's going to aggressively uh, make a big deal about them not wearing masks and rubbing around on each other. Uh, that would be a safe assumption. <laughs> okay. A safe assumption that that in a perfect world... She would hope that the Trump rally could happen uh, uh, somewhere where I could just like hermetically plop in. <laughs> like I could just, they would I'd put me in a Zorb and I would just paddle around and I would still get all the credit for doing my job. So with that being the case, um, like I feel like you and I are roughly on the same page and I feel like our spouses, our significant others are roughly on the same page. Um, and it's really just just a flip of the coin that that you have a very difficult place that you've been put in. And, and I don't envy the discussions that you must have been having that I assume have led you to this moment where you're going to go to a Trump rally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we've talked about it. I think the 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 biggest thing, the, the only difference is, is that this is at a very a very uh, a specific inflection point in my career as an independent journalist in that like uh we saw the greatest traction in listeners downloads interactions and patreon when i was on the road there was a there was a thirst in in a way that i have never really felt in my life for something that i've done yeah there was a thirst for an independent journalistic voice and perspective that people trust out there in the same places that we're making news. It, like, especially and, and so since, if that's the case and we haven't had any opportunity for that, and this is the first thing it like my news brain was like, well, look, if this is, if that's the, if that's the pattern, then, like, I don't really have a choice. I have to either decide, is this the lane I'm in or am I not in this lane? Because if I'm in this lane, I just I, like there's there's not really a lot of conversation if if I want this to be my profession. God, in the back of my mind, all I'm hearing is Jesus Jones, uh, uh, World Waking Up From History song, whatever that is right here, right now. <laughs> but, but especially because um, uh, I don't know what the next season of wake the dead will uh look like or raise the dead but but uh yeah. but i know that um seems like four years after that is awfully similar to this one and it seems like if you were somebody who did raise the dead and had the opportunity to watch the world wake up from history <laughs> it seems like you would do that right well, I mean, I, I, again, like I, I, I don't want to make it a big thing uh, uh, beyond the idea that I, I do think we all have to make decisions about our careers. We all have to make sacrifices for our careers, and those look different. Uh, do I relish the opportunity to go somewhere where things are open? Uh, uh, if you've heard me bitch about how uh, annoyed I am about how everything's closed in Alameda, although update to that. Uh, Outdoor dining opens in Alameda County the day I leave for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like, and, and, um, uh, I, I, uh, I well here, it. hold on. Let me let me let me let me finish my statement before we go somewhere else. Okay. Yes, initially it was like, oh my God, it'll be fun to be able to go to a quiet bar like I always want to, go to a corner where I'm not talking to anybody and just be in a place that's not my house. It'll be great to go to a hotel. All of that is gone at this point. The joy and excitement that uh, of, of going to a place where I could be, I could do a little bit more of the normal things that I had done before, that has all been sapped away by concern for those around me, concern about my reputation amongst not only the people that are uh, the hardcore fans of all of our shows, but also my circle of friends online i've gotten plenty of text messages that are like you're doing what and not in a like in a in a cool wow that's crazy kind of way but in like a, i just wanted to confirm that you're doing this thing that i would totally disagree with kind of way 
And like, it, it, it doesn't seem very fun. And yet it seems as necessary as I thought of it when I first made the decision. It's, it's so nutty because like, like right now, I mean, we're in the middle of a, of a shooting bonanza for Mono Rogue specifically because like, like, uh, Jason was courageous enough to say like, you know what? We're looks like we're out of episodes. I'm just going to move in for a bit. And he's here for, for weeks. And then after this, we're looking at testing and then multiple weeks of him having to quarantine at home and all that stuff. So uh, like those aren't decisions I get to make, uh, even though I find myself kind of tense, like if, as if my daughter asked to shave off her eyebrows, um, <laughs> the, uh, I, and, um, uh, I, 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 I don't know, man, like, like part of me wants to make all the jokes, but a bigger part of me is like, uh, man, this, this shit's really hard. And, and, and I, I, I don't think it's insignificant to really take a moment to reflect on just how hard a decision and a discussion you've had to go through to get to this moment to commit to your career as an independent journalist is, and, and what that means for you know, complications on your marriage and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, again, I, I, I don't know if there's another way to say it other than I've never had traction on anything like I did when the, when the primaries were going on like there. And, and by the way, considering how many people I used to, I was hanging out with on that trail that now don't have jobs. I can only imagine that that's a position for which the world wants more because there will be less voices that are hired to cover this kind of stuff and they will be from annoying sources. So well, it's like, if, if that's the case, like, and by the way, also, um, we had this conversation on the happy hour a couple of weeks ago. You were very, very kind and, and motivating in terms of talking about where I am in my career and where I should go. Uh, the reality is if I want to advance in my career, the people I need to be talking to are the people that are covering stuff like this. I think, I think and that's being the... seen at stuff like this and doing stuff like this and being on their radar. Like that's, that's, how, that's exactly how I get forward in a world where I want to be. I think that's the part that scares me is that you and I seem to have the same DNA of wanting to put on the evil Knievel outfit and start revving that engine and, and go sailing over those buses or whatever. Um, I, quite literally, just as COVID was coming to town, we shot an episode where I put my fucking mouth on a bar and then got yeah. sick for two weeks afterwards. Um, I, and, and I think that I'm okay with myself being dumb, the fire eater, the, dude who lays on beds of nails and shoves, yeah. you know, whatever, all the things. Right. Um, but, but I feel this strong impulse to shut the fuck up when it comes to advice of people I love and their relationships and what it means to their relationships and all that stuff. So, so all of this is to say, uh, I am very interested in hearing and listening uh, but, but, but you will, uh, I will do my well, best and let to me, not and be let me, talking. Let me, let me, let me be very, very clear. Um, Ashley has been supportive about this the entire time, despite the fact that she would fucking very much rather me not go. She has not, uh, we have always been a very career forward, uh, uh, partnership. In fact, it's part of the, like the foundation of our relationship is that we both came out of relationships where we had partners that were very much, uh, not, supportive of what we wanted to do so us being supportive of each other is a cornerstone uh, and she has certainly held up her end of that bargain in this particular situation it is not because of pressure from her that i am staying in a hotel for three to four days after i get back it is me wanting to make sure not only that i respect her but also that i respect my building that i respect my city and that quite honestly there's no fucking blueprint for this, let alone a blueprint for an independent outfit, right? It's like, so if I can have any, if I want to have any moral authority, I can't cut corners. And, and that's been reinforced by the fact that I'm, I'm talking on the internet and 
like I, I I can't lie to the internet. I can't lie to I can't lie to chat realm. I can't lie to this audience. I can't lie to the PX3 audience. So for me, there was a a big shift when I caught myself for the first time, and I can't say when it was. Maybe maybe around seven years into scam school or whatever, and. You know, th there's different factions of of uh, magicians who are various levels of cool of when it comes to teaching magic on the internet and whether you should pay or learn for free or what have you. Um, and I found myself unironically thinking about my legacy, like 50, 100 years from now, I'll, I, I will be maybe a single line of, of this multi multi link chain. Um, I mean, I think, I think it's not an exaggeration, Justin, to, to say that, that you've got to think about your legacy as somebody who is, who is conducting an ongoing um, assessment of the similarity between, you know, 1960, 1964, and so on, and where we're at now. Um, uh, is, 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 is that overstating it to say, like, like there's some kind of thinking about your legacy and whether or not you, you bothered to show up or not? Well, yeah. I mean, part of it is just, again, it's, it's, I found what people wanted. Like as creatives, all you ever want, you throw so much shit at the wall, right? Like all you ever want to do is find the thing that gets the connection, yeah. you know? And, and, uh, uh, whether that be, you know, monetarily in your bookings, you know when the connection with the audience is re is is real, and when uh, uh, the internet, which is like a, a forever continuum, when you find the thing that they want, like Brian, you found with Modern Rogue in terms of shaping that into exactly what that is. What you found with Scam School and now Scam Nation in in changing and evolving that. The first time again that ever happened was me being on the road. People were into that. Because there's a billion motherfuckers like me that are sitting in front of a camera and talking about politics on Twitch. Yep. Maybe not a billion, a couple hundred. There's certainly many more than that that have podcasts. There's even more than that that have jobs at, at, at places that pay them to do it. Uh, nobody has the freedom uh, and, and the literal freedom and the brand of freedom that the internet provides. And the ability or desire to go out and cover these things the way that people cover these things. And so it's like, I don't know anybody else that's doing it. If I'm the only one doing it and it's a situation where nobody wants to fucking be there. Cause by the way, I don't want to fucking be there. It seems like it's the only place to be. So, uh, what is the story you tell? I mean, obviously you report on the things as they happened or whatever, and you have your own recordings of everything, but, but, but of course there's the meta narrative of everything from your tweets to various live streams and all that stuff. Like is, is your story that you're a brave adventurer landing on the moon or is your story like everything's fine. This is as normal as normal can be or, or, or some middle, I, I would love to hear more about where your head's at. I mean, my story is when I said I was going to be an independent perspective for anybody that, that trusts me or believes in me or, 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 uh, wants to know, like, you normally have to hear my perspective as I, as I bring in all a bunch of other stuff, right? But it's at its best when I'm viewing the things firsthand, right? Like when I'm there in New Hampshire watching in the, in the room, watching Joe Biden call somebody a lying dog face pony soldier, I can come back and say that was the fourth weirdest thing he said <laughs> during the entire time. It just happened to be the most soundbiteable. Right. Like that's a perspective that people don't have, the news doesn't have, uh, blogs don't have because they're either going to be shitting on Biden all the time or uh, covering for him. I'm that guy. Like, I, I, nobody else is like me, and I don't say that with any ego. And I meant that if people paid for me to do it, I would do it. People paid for me to be on the road before, and then I couldn't. So now that there's a thing to go on the road for, that's a contract I already signed. I mean, that's that's what it really boils down to is you made a decision. Uh, hey, what is nobody doing? Punk rock politics coverage. Part of being punk rock 
is shrugging when somebody says, you realize those are all razor blades. And, 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 and this is your moment to shrug and go charging forward into those razor blades. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, again, and it's not without hesitation. It's certainly not without fucking annoyance because I certainly don't want to come home after like whatever this trip is going to be uh, and then stay in a fucking random hotel two blocks from my house uh, for, for four days. But that is what's going to happen. And I'm going to do it because I want to set a good example and I do care about it. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I, I hope people enjoy it. Uh, uh, listen, if there's ever time to listen to the politics, politics, politics podcast, now is going to be the time, uh, uh, because I, I, I do feel like it's, it's something that people want. And, and if I'm going to indulge my own self-importance, I think it's necessary. Uh, well, before we plug our own podcast, where should people go to support politics, politics, politics? Uh, the podcatcher of your choice, just search for politics. I heard on shop of or on Shopify on Spotify. Uh, uh, it's the first thing that comes up when you start typing politics, Ooh, which I'm very happy about. That's good. Uh, but, uh, uh anywhere you get it, it's all listed cause they all clone the Apple store. Um, uh, if you want to leave a, a review there, but otherwise you can support the Patreon. If you believe that this is worth putting money toward, you can support the Patreon at TakePoliticsSeriously.com. Hells yeah. But in the meantime, if you want to support this little show, we recommend you head on over to Patreon.com slash Night Attack. If you are a new pledger or if you up your pledge, we say up yours too by randomly call calling out somebody in a little segment we like to call. You normally talk about Patreon a little longer than this. Uh, oh, hey, Patreon. It's a great platform, it's man. It's super great. It's Everything a, that Jack Conte ever did was right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time. Time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of <laughs> man. We're gonna go out of order. Normally, I try to set up a situation and then we announce the name. I'm just gonna say the name, and I need you, Justin, to set up the situation. Okay. Where cool. do you think you would encounter? <clears throat> yeah. Sutherland Boswell. Oh, uh, Sutherland Boswell, uh, of course, we, we flash back to uh, 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 1950 uh, 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 in, in West Texas when, uh, uh, you know, just a, a, a ragtag group of uh, football players. Boy, they can't do anything right. The quarterback's throwing the ball backwards <laughs> into the ground. The, the, the kicker kicks the uh, cheerleader right in the face. But then... Like a shadow coming across the horizon. There's Coach Sutherland Boswell. Who oh, I'm sorry. One... Have you not heard of me? My name's Sutherland Boswell. I took the 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 West Texas journeyman and made them into masters. Uh, it's me, Sutherland Boswell. And then everybody stops and they're looking at Sutherland Boswell and the, the, the cheerleader stops rubbing her face that she just got kicked in. And, uh, and, and uh, Sutherland Boswell, of course, gives his famous speech that he, that he gave to the team to get him on the right track. He says, <clears throat> some people say we'll never make it to the moon. But me, Sutherland Boswell, I believe we will make it to the moon someday, maybe in 14 years. By the way, it's exactly 1955, I think. Anyway, but the point is, you could win this football game. So says me, Sutherland Boswell. End of speech. And so excited, so excited <laughs> by that speech and electrified by the notion of American spacefaring men going to the moon, they started chanting their new coach's name. Sutherland Boswell. Sutherland Boswell. Sutherland Boswell. Boswell. And then they went to the thank moon. Thank you. And uh, then thank they, you very much, Sutherland yeah, Boswell. And that, and that quarterback and kicker, Buzz Aldrin <laughs> and Neil Armstrong. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I guess you were right. You, uh, the, the moon is a cheerleader, and you kicked her right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and Sutherland Boswell then faded into the mist because he was really a ghost. <sighs> 
Also, uh, I, 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 we like to tell a totally true, completely unbroken story, uh, completely unrelated with the fact that we're live on twitch.tv slash night attack every Tuesday night. And that uh, uh, we've got a little thingy for a minute that shows us people who are donating bits. Uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian, who uh, I'll tell the story here today. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, actually, no, Brian, you tell it because it, as it turns out, my uh, my my uh, oh, man, I don't know about you, great. but but I thought everything was smooth as silk. And then I found myself in a real one. yam. that's my Hell code yeah. word for hot beverages, which is what I mean by like being immersed into hot coffee. Now, let me tell you. The Ben Franklin probably felt the exact same way. The moment lightning struck him with the idea for a light bulb, and he was also in a Wan Yam, which is weird that this story is going in circles. But the point is, <laughs> he thought it was smart to fly a kite during a lightning storm. And uh, uh, Brina Warrior Princess said, Oh, that Ben Franklin, he's uh, going to get a zap. And then he's going to end up being just a, 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 a little smudge mark on the on that wall. And then and Greg and Poof <laughs> said, what's up with that accent? I think it's vaguely racist. And she goes, it doesn't matter. The segment's over. Rick Roll Martian, thank you 1,000. And then it was gone. Wow. I mean, she's Wario. She's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, thank you to everybody who watches us live twitch.tv slash night attack uh, uh, look I, I mentioned this on the politics podcast and a lot of people didn't know if you are listening to this right now uh, and you only listen on podcast only if you're listening to us right now if you're not listening to us um, fuck your mother go kill yourself you are a piece of shit but don't worry, you didn't hear that because you're not listening to this. Because you're listening and you're not, not, okay, yes, we're all, we're there. Uh, so here's what you want to do. Download the Twitch app, literally, if you're only a podcast listener. But only if you're listening right app. now. Yes, uh, download the Twitch app, follow us, Night Attack, on the Twitch app, and sign up for notifications because you can listen audio only. And we're doing these happy hours one hour a day. So if you just want extra content, in the middle of the day, you can listen audio only on your phone. I've gotten multiple emails from politics people that didn't know that was the case and were like, this is a game changer. Uh, 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 this is awesome. I'm so glad that you told us about Cannot this. Cannot so, say this enough. Only if you're listening to this. If you're not only. hearing the words we're saying right now, get bent, die in a fire, fuck you. I swear to God, if we catch you downloading the Twitch app and we find out that you're not listening to us and you're not doing it because we're telling you right now to do it to listen to us, then then uh, you might as well shave off your eyebrows. Yep, half of them. If if she shaves off her eyebrows, I'll donate you know what? some of mine. Hold I'll, on, I'll, I'll shave on. mine down to to get Josie's Here's eyebrows the answer. back to where they need the to be. The answer is yes. She can <laughs> she can shave off half her eyebrows. She just has to pick left or right. That's the that's the Solomon splitting the baby. That's solution. gonna look worse. No! <laughs> you can so definitely you're, you're, shave you're gonna, off you're, half you're, your you're gonna checkmate her into not doing it because you're, like it's no, gonna no, have I'm to look yes. like garbage. I'm saying yes, just yes. Shave no, off it, half dude, your eyebrows. You just you just need to slip a, a, a an old uh, an old tether to the uh, to the the person that's gonna look her into her tweed face and say, "God, no, <laughs> no," and then make up a bunch of cosmetology reasons why, like, oh, but you're more of an autumn," or I don't know, whatever the fuck these people say to each other. I mean, it's tough because, like, what's the worst thing I could say? Like, you'll look like Spock, who's awesome. Uh, oh. Uh, no, the only thing you need to think about is the other side of that phone call. That was, that's, that's the only, you, you, you were not in an independent situation. <laughs> you were in a catch and kill scenario. I mean, luckily we, we put a pin in it though. Nothing's decided. Patreon. Exactly. Also, patreon.com slash night. I think our bit boss is Wan Yam. I guess we'll find out at the end of the show. Oh, wait, wait. Is Wan Yam ahead? Normally it's Jordan DeMoss. And, and we, we, there's no way we can tell for another minute. Oh, so. but, 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 but even though we can't tell, we judge very heavily. Very much. Very. So. It's very important to be the bit yeah, boss. It is. We got a game today. What do we got? got? So we have a game sent in from Mad Scientist Kel. Mad Scientist Cal, who I believe has sent in a game about six or seven months ago. Uh, God, shit got dark after Keenan. 
you know, we're all s- smart. Frankly, we're all smart here, right? <laughs> oh my God. I think Wait, so. I think <laughs> if there's one thing that the that this show screams is smart people. <laughs> right. Also, we all and, have our eyebrows. I would like to point out that's another thing we all have going for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, every listener, I'm sure, has some field of study that they're interested in or maybe have some expertise in. You know, l- studying is life and life is studying. <laughs> Indeed. That's what I have tattooed on my stomach like Tupac had thug life. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is a game that I am calling what Whatology. Uh, Mad Scientist Cal uh, found a fantastic website that lists all of the English words that end in ology. Nice. And what you're going to do is I'm going to give you that ology word, and you're both of you are going to have to guess what that ology word is a study of. Can I can I guess whether or not it involves Paula Abdul and is called vibology? Vibology, something, something. N- no. uh, not on this keep list. Keep going. No, no, no. Wait, keep going. I can't. Vi- oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. I'm trying to suppress this. <laughs> we, 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 we discussed on Happy Hour that uh, I lived to make Brian twist in the wind, <laughs> and I said I didn't recognize it. So now I'm taking a conscious effort to not, as soon as Brian shows any kind of weakness, immediately jump in and tell him to go do that 50 more times. Even like, though I, I even though I explicitly want gave permission to. and said that it's one of my favorite things about you. That's no, fine. That's fine. No, no. I, look, I'm trying to be a better friend. <laughs> In 2020, 2020 has enough hardships. You don't need you don't need your own friend coming in and exploiting these weaknesses. I'm a I, I'm I'm one step better. One step better. Here I stopped my check swing. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to... Uh, oh, thank you, Jordan DeMoss. You're the bit button. Uh, thank you, Jordan DeMoss. Uh, so it'll just be the two of you. You guys will trade off with who goes first. Let me give you your first. Uh, whatology. Also, screw you, Jordan DeMoss. Nobody ever liked you. We always loved Wan Yam the most. That's unrelated to the thousand bits that just came in. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Can you tell me about hippology? Wait, Hippo- sorry, just H I P? Uh H I P P O L O G Y. In fact, let me find out. Hippology. Would would it would it be the study of large mammals? I think okay. that's the, because I'm ass, I'm assuming that hippopotamus is somehow uh at a at a, at a root word related to the same hip hip. Uh, part so so it's so all say I'll say related to large mammals. Large mammals and science will determine who's closest. You get a who's point closest, if you yeah. you get a point if you're closest. You're gonna get uh, I don't know three points if you get it exact. Okay. Uh, Justin, what would you, what do you think? Hippology I mean, is. I, I would say that what you hear is not a test because you are ologying to the beat. Uh, that it's a hip hop, a hip into the hip and a hip hip a hopping. Uh, no. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I can almost hear the rest of the song in my I don't mind. Don't stop. I'm rocking to the bang bang boogie to up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. Now what you hear is not a test. I went to school for this ology, and what it does is rhyme some words because you get the feet in your legs. They're at the bottom of them, and you shake them around when you're learning these songs. There's a tiger over here because that's what we do when we're rapping about hip. Apology word. Wow. <laughs> I, I love that song. one. I remember it so well. I That's a that great one. song. <laughs> That's what they play when you graduate with a degree in hippology as you walk across the stage. <laughs> it was originally an Animaniacs bit, but it was so useful at remembering what hippology is that kids everywhere memorized it. Also, I, I'm more tempted to go with like hip, uh, 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 Hippocrates. And so maybe it's more of a uh, like a doctor uh, thing, like, like like a Hippocratic oath, yeah, right. Which is first, do no do harm. No harm. Mm. So so I will say that it is the study of pledges, <laughs> important <laughs> pledges, right oaths. oaths, oaths, oaths. It's oaths. Uh, oaths. Uh, that's our new show, Hearth and Oath Oaths. Yes, <laughs> where it's like we just <laughs> we just make promises left and right. No, the song that you graduated <laughs> that one is I like to oaths. Oaths, 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 and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Brian has had large mammals. Now, what in- you hear is not a pledge. It's a promise that you'll keep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry. I have made no such pledge like right. Justin has, so I'll just let you go <laughs> as many times as you want. Hippology is the study of horses. That's a large mammal. That's a point for That's Brian. Yeah, yes, science. That's Last fun. time I checked, uh, uh, fucking horses never kept a promise. Fucking liars. Yeah. They say they won't Look eat that carrot. Guess what? Next it's thing the you know, study of hippology. <laughs> All right, we're going to go into our next one. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, talk uh, about long faces. Horses could shave their eyebrows. No fucking problem, man. That would look great. Um, do, do you remember when that video came out? The way, like, like I think totally unironically, you and I were like, oh, man, what a great video that is. Why'd they have to show that horse dong? <laughs> So many people I can't share oh, that in, video. Oh, in, 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 in the look at my horse video. Yeah, the Weeble one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's right. like, uh, now, now my daughter is, my daughter's 16 and I still don't feel comfortable showing her that. that showing her the video. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Because there's a big horse dick that shows up. It's a, I mean, now and, granted, and, and, and I mean, it's a winky. Frankly, it's a winky. Yeah. First off. Uh, I mean, uh, granted, if you're around actual horses, you're gonna see a horse dick. Yeah. Like, like they're they're hard to miss. Yeah. Uh, look at my horse. Look it up. Here we go. Yeah. Especially if you want to see a cartoon horse dick. I did watch a video about vampire semen with my daughters. That was fine though. <laughs> All right, round two. Justin, we're gonna start with you on this one. Stigmiology. Stigmiology is what we're looking for. Stigmiology. Stigmiology. So I w I would say that a uh, a uh, you know my initial thing is that it's the study of uh uh the the study of Sting the WCW wrestler and not the musician, um. But no, I'm I'm gonna say a, a stigmiologist is somebody that studies uh a. a the uh the way that the ground looks when it rains and there's mud what turns into mud what stays not mud call in a stigmiologist please okay uh uh god uh, i would love to see you of... defend a phd thesis like, just by asking a bunch of questions in circles and then say, call me a stigmiologist at the end. Yeah. I feel like I, that's a good answer, I feel like. Good answer to me. Good, good answer, answer of the study good of answer. when the ground, the what of... the ground looks like after the rain and mud and what turns into mud and what doesn't turn into mud. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I say... mean, I don't know how I could make it clearer. Yeah. Ryan, I'm stigmiology. Gonna say, I'm going to say... It's probably more closely related to stigmata, and I don't know the roots of that word, but I know it involves bloody hands. So I'm going to say injuries and blood related. Injuries and blood. Okay. So you wouldn't go with like a cult or miracles or, or something like that? Because that's what I think of when I think of stigmata. Uh, what I think of is the uh, very, very popular uh, viral video with somebody demonstrating a new routine he's working on called stigmata i've never seen that sure one. is that the one where the rain hits the ground and mud and but then some of it doesn't turn into mud some of it doesn't <laughs> turn into mud because that's the kind of shit a stigmiologist would be needed for pretty big shit <laughs> all right yeah all right stigmiology is the study of punctuation and with Brian, science, this is a real, <laughs> real one for science. I, I mean, punctuation. I agree. I, Only one of these involves. I do think with Brian saying the word stigmata, uh, science pretty clearly gives him the point on that one. Good, good, uh, good going. We got, we got plenty more here. A raindrop Man. looks like a period. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> It's more of a comma or an apostrophe. Kind of a lot of other better oh, options I'm sorry. than period. Oh, it's the study of punctuation. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Maybe if rain looks like all punctuation at all times, maybe I should get, I don't know, a little consideration from science. Wouldn't even go to the beep boops. It's fine. No, no, no. <laughs> we Brian can't do said, the beep boops on the Brian second said, question. Brian said, hey, remember a thing I did. Uh, I mean, and, I'll and then, all right. Round three. <laughs> 
<laughs> Just Ryan, we're starting with you. Owenology. Owenology. Uh, that o -E -N -O. is Owenology. O E N O. O E N O. Oh, I thought it was about our friend Owen J.J. Stone. Oh, AKA no, that's Owenology. Owen yeah, that's yeah. Owenology. Owenology, I think it's about fucking. Mm. I don't know how. I don't know what you're fucking or why you're fucking it, mm -hmm. but I know that somewhere somebody's fucking, and it's only through Owenology that we're going we're gonna to get that O. going to get it. Getting I'm glad that. we could hear your birds and the bees speak from your parents. <laughs> Can we do <laughs> that one every time? Right next I, I, I kick in the door to my kids like, it's about time for you to learn about oenology. Somewhere, somehow, somebody's fucking. All right, good talk. Good night. Good talk. <laughs> Study that in school. Also, you want to watch the vampire semen show with me? Come I'm on. I'm so proud of the vampire <laughs> semen bit. Justin. He loves talking about it. Oenology. Uh, So uh, my initial thought is that it's OENology, which makes me think it's a study of the dyslexic understanding of the word one. Or Neo. Or Neo. I think it's about, Neo I think it's about the Matrix. Maybe it's Neo <laughs> the Max Geo. Geo. Neo the, the Max That's Rix. a good point. I feel like it might be bonk. <laughs> um, I don't know. That was the Turbo Graphics. That was yeah. Neo Geo. Uh, all right. I, I'm I'm gonna go. Owenology <laughs> is the study of bird bones. <laughs> Actually, that's not bad. Um, bird bones. I think I think wouldn't that be ornithology, or at least it sounds like in the same neighborhood. Oh, now no, he no, knows. Well, what... No, yeah, no, but they're the bones, Brian. So you, Owenology fits into ornithology. Because that's the study of the whole bird. Right. Because also, what did the bird say shortly before it died and became bones? Oh, no! Ology. Yeah. That's where they got the name. That, and that's where they got it. All right. Uh, that's where they got it. Oh, analogy is the study of all aspects of wine and wine making, with the exception of vine growing and grape harvesting. You want to know what? I should have fucking known that. That's actually like, <laughs> that's actually embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing because I'm almost positive <laughs> I've seen that word before because there's like, I, I live close to too many fucking wine places that are like, I'm in like one of the wine capitals of the world and I'm almost positive I've seen that name. I'm an embarrassment. Like, this is really like, in fact, anybody who trusts me to, to go to this fucking rally and give you the straight truth, you should be reconsidering uh, you know, where you put your faith. That's really <laughs> stupid of me. Oh, I think we will have to put this one in the science computer here. Just um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, this report here says fucking gets the point. Fucking gets the oh, point. Oh, God yeah. damn it. I mean, wine and fucking go together more than fucking and bird <laughs> Wine and bird bones. Bird bones. Like white on wine. I mean, I don't know. Ask, ask my wife about my bird bone. Yeah. I won't That's do true. That. If Brian moves too fast, he levitates it, it, off the ground. <laughs> no, I, I was going to make something about like, like, like a hummingbird. Or... Yeah. All right, next round. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to start with Justin on this one. Yeah. We're looking for Magicology. Magicology. M A G I C O. Magicology. No way. Like like as your friend, I know we're competing against each other, but no way. It's a fucking trap. It's a trap. Wasn't that the band that did like the like marry that girl? Marry you anyway, like the like it was like kind of like a reggae song about like asking for a girl's hand in marriage with no, her dad. You're thinking of the uh, the song that goes, "You can do magicology, you can do anything." The answer is anything your heart desires. Oh, you know shit. darn I think well it was when you any, cast anything that your spell, heart desires. Hypnotize with your. As the heart All right, magic. That's fun. Do you write that? Turn to flame. 
Magicology That's a juice. Brian Brushwood original. <laughs> um, rude by Magic. It was that. Okay, so I didn't. Well, you I, gotta I be that. so rude. So rude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shit. I mean, I'm gonna go with fuck. I'm behind. I gotta go with the safe option here. Magicology. It's the study of uh, uh, uh magic uh, and 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 all of its surrounding properties. Press the digitation ledger domain, if you will. All right, so Justin has said magic. I think it is the study of loneliness. I mean, same thing. <laughs> same ties, not EXE. <laughs> I mean, if we're being honest, I mean, look, I'm just going to say if you got a really good double lift, then I could probably count on one hand how many times that you fucking were like, oh, geez, I got too many people calling me. I mean, I'm just curious which of us is closer according to science. Let's find out. <laughs> Magicology is the study of supernatural magic. That's Brian's point. My point. What? <laughs> Loneliness? What? I said magic. What? You said stage magic. That's a di- no, there's a disambiguation on this page. No, For illusionism stage or stage magic. magic, say magic illusion. I mean, let's not. face it. Is oh, that my press face it. Oh, if you're studying you. the supernatural, Fuck you're you. probably Fuck pretty you. lonely. I think science is right on this, this one. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's Fuck like science. <laughs> Fuck science. We're going into the double points round of the show. Um, just oh, um, oh, some on the fly game for horse, horse shit. God, I God fucking damn. hate you. And I know what prestidigitation and leisure oh. domain is too. So, uh, oh. all right. Oh, fucking brag about it. Go on <laughs> Tumblr and fucking write a post. I will. Uh, okay. Go do the TikTok dance and ha- and point to like I know <laughs> ledger domain prestidigitation <laughs> another word I like fucking Justin out of points being a dick pretending I'm science. Oh. Uh, I let's not say, whoa, say whoa, anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Somebody just crossed back. the line for the first time ever oh, in the okay. history of all this right. show. All right, all right. All right. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me let me use magicology to make it all better. <laughs> now is that real? Ma- okay. Uh, round four. And this is our double points round. Or we're starting to double points. So it's two points if you get it right. Six points if you get it exactly right. Justin, we're not starting with you. Brian, we're starting with you. <laughs> the wor- that, that's an old classic Alex Trebek move. Really just- he would he would he would say we're yeah. starting this yeah. round. It might he would call somebody out. <laughs> Specifically point out that whatever, we're not whatever. starting with you. <laughs> it, we're going with this other guy. It might sound like I know <laughs> what I'm Strange. doing, but you wanna know what? I'm texting, <laughs> I'm texting Josie and just telling her, shave the fucking eyebrows now. Your dad told me it was fine. <laughs> right, we're starting with you. <laughs> The word we're looking at is Majorology. M-A-G-I-R. Majorology. Um, that's about magnets. It's 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 about the interaction of electromagnetic fields. Magnets, okay, electro about the fundamental force of electromagnetism. Field, okay. Justin, majorology. I think it's like magma. Like it's like hot lava. <laughs> Some shit with a volcano or some shit like that. I don't know. I would love to go. PhD, you walk in, you're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Talk to me about fucking magma and shit and volcanoes. Yeah. I mean, what? You're walking up, you think it's a mountain. <laughs> Fuck you. It's a volcano. And it's like, it's like a zit could kill you with fire, but on the earth. Welcome to Magnarology 101. Here's your diploma, <laughs> sir. <laughs> All right, so Brian. Consider this the gift of the Magnarology that you got. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is, oh, goodness. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brian has said magnets in the electromagnetic field. Justin has said magma. The answer that we are looking for is... The study of cooking. The study oh, of man. cooking. I think, I think I think Justin's got that one right. Come on, come on. I mean, where's it gonna go? Than Where's that magnets. boy gonna go, baby? At least magma's mm-hmm. hot. 
See, I, and I think because magnet because magma hot, the two points go to our good friend Justin Robert Young. Congratulations! Yeah, magma Fucking is hot. finally. Good point. Fucking finally. Now yeah. we're on the there we trail. Go. We're now four now to two. Now we're doing it. All right, uh, Justin, we're gonna start with you on this one. The uh, ology we are looking to talk about is selenology. S e l e n. Sel selenology, selenology. Ugh, I would say, yeah, it's probably the study of legendary Tejano superstar Selena. Got to keep an eye out for her. Al fucking gone too soon. Rip Selena. Fuck that lady that worked for her. Killed her, man. <laughs> fucking spoiler for that movie starring Jennifer Lopez, but as fucking breakout performance for the record. I feel like. Uh, mm. Can't believe you walked right by it, folks. I'm here to talk to you about one thing. Selenology. The secret of selenology is ABC. Always be closing. A-I-D-A. -A, attention. Do I have your attention? Interest. Do you interested in an afterlife? Do you? Decision. <laughs> have you made your There's decision for do. Christ? A is action. And that's what selenology is. Uh, also, I think it has something to do with the sun. I think I think it's uh, like a... Uh, oh, yeah. like a sun. Yeah. Which apparently is more important than Latino music to yeah. Brian. Fucking son of God. All right. Selenology is. Well, no, no, no. Be careful because Brian will box you in if you fucking mean Jesus and you don't mean the literal son. Like he'll 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 box you in if, if it's not if it's not a uh, 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 both of them at the same time. Me? This science fucking science. Whatever. Fuck science. <laughs> right, you said Brian. <laughs> right, so. All right. Selenology is the the scientific study of the moon. All right, that so is. which is closer, the sun or Teano superstar <laughs> Selena? <laughs> Who's closer to the moon? <laughs> Who's closer to the moon? I think just distance-wise. The, the brilliant <laughs> cultural artifact for which has united millions like Selena right. or some horseshit fucking sun. The thing is, the moon is no. still body. By the way, there's by a billion the way, of them out there. <laughs> millions of Spanish language music fans are waiting on your response. Uh, also, no, also right. worth worth noting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the sun does not have a backside. The moon does. And also Selena did. So, you know, uh, so let that be the reason for your answer that you're Brian's about to give. Brian's honoring will... her however he pleases. Oh it's fine. All right. Yeah, I think just distance-wise. That, that, uh, that, might, that might be a darker side of Selenology, <laughs> but, like, it certainly is part of the field. I need to have the klaxon alarm on my phone the woo all yeah. right uh the science has said that tejana superstar selena hey! is the point it's bullshit Wait, it's, even all, to this day the significantly the closer star the sun is a star they're two stars mm, I, the moon I, is mm. also a star and i think oh, i'm sorry selena that. wasn't a star you know <laughs> I, no, wait, that was my point. Is that she <laughs> Good point. <laughs> is this a Chewbacca defense? <laughs> I'm just saying. Some racism. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> a few more here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the store is four to four here in this double points round. We're going to start with Brian. Brian, yes. I want you to tell me about. Ready. Vexillology. Vexillology. V e x i double -L, l. Vexillology. Uh, this is the study of puzzle making and puzzle makers and puzzles and also labyrinth and contact juggling and David Bowie. Okay, you can't think that many things. Also, <laughs> goblins and uh, <laughs> magic and joy. We're going with puzzle making and puzzle makers. All right, Justin. But Vex also, also Selena. <laughs> Just to be safe, I will write down Selena. Okay, good. okay. I got to keep an eye out for her. All right, uh, Justin Bryan has said puzzle making slash maker slash Selena vexillology. <laughs> yeah, this is a study about just being vexed. Like, like you ever just get like all crossed up and and people are like trying you and it's like a problem and 
and you don't want to deal with it and you just like think to yourself like motherfucker i'm vexed I like I, I'm so vexed. I need to study this in the history of all vexing. No, I'm not. I'm not. And familiar. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna go to a vexillologist. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I've ever experienced this. I know. I know what, it, what it's like to flex. Uh, is that is that what you mean? Do you mean flex? No. Like like no, you're no, no, swole. No, no. no, that's you're yeah. When you're out. when you're when you're jacked, you know, to the nines. Yeah. And and you're trying to like pop those delts and those quads, yeah. the buys, the tries, yeah. the traps. Not that. This is when you're out at a Subway sandwich shop pre-COVID <laughs> and you're like, I'd like to get a tuna sandwich. And they're like, uh, uh, sorry, we're out of tuna. And then the mayor walks in behind you and says the regular and they pull out a bunch of fucking tuna and start making a sandwich. Right. But that's, that's, that's some when... shit that'll have you looking directly into uh, camera and saying, I'm vexed. I mean, but wouldn't. Wouldn't it be easier to just tighten your chest up and just have your fucking swole ass muscles bulge out? I mean, sure, if we were to all, maybe you would like that, right? And you try to do that, except you've never worked out in your life and you're 90 pounds soaking wet. And so really it just means that your stick arms are trembling as you squeeze them as hard as possible. And what are you going to do to Mayor John you? Cena? You can't fight Mayor exactly. John, John Cena. Cena. John Cena is the mayor. He's got tuna on his chin because he's already de he's devoured his sandwich and he starts laughing at you and you think, yet again i'm and just as you're about to say it a foot just shatters the door doesn't even <laughs> kick it in literally just shatters the glass and says vex and it's a man in a top hat with a long beard and he's got a sash that says vexillologist also it's abraham lincoln also and i guess yeah i guess we're just talking different languages it's here a, yeah it's if abraham lincoln were gandalf <laughs> and he just screams vex he says he says a president is never late is never early a president arrives precisely on time also exactly. we need to come together as a country oh my god and then he digs a deep drag off his pipe and fucking blows out a his historically disturbingly accurate uh, portrayal of him getting shot in the back of the head by John Wilkes Booth. No! Giving a speech saying, I know much of this country is feeling flexed, but now we must come together <laughs> thanks to vexology. All right. So uh, just to recap here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian's answer is puzzle making slash puzzle makers slash Selena. You got to keep an eye out for Selena. And Justin's <laughs> answer is the study of being vexed. Also, uh, the mayor is John Cena and Abraham Lincoln <laughs> Abraham is Lincoln being played up. by Gandalf. Yes, yeah. I think you got it. That's yeah, that's right. pretty Just much. Sure. Yeah, that pretty much is it. Just making sure. Just Although I got, I got, a, I got, I'm going to give you one guess as to my feelings if I don't get this point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me get my hands on my shirt ready to tear it wide open <laughs> uh, vexillology is the study of the history usage and symbolism of flags flags yeah people in the chat got this like immediately it's wild wow so who's closer who is closer puzzle making puzzle makers and selena vex john lincoln <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> least... I have to put this in the machine. I have to, if yeah, if I can't figure it out in five seconds, I gotta put it in. That's my supervisor says. Put it in the machine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least one mentions Abe Lincoln, who <laughs> oh, the machine had, almost knocked over it. its white claw. All right, click. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was fast. Machine, machine's running like uh, it's, You can hear the white claw. <laughs> All right, we've gotten a result here. And it looks like uh, science has given the points to one Justin Robert Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yes, yeah. I don't need a vexologist today. Because <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. I'm the mayor. My name's John Cena. You're feeling pretty I'm good about everything happening, you know, surrounding Abraham Lincoln. Feeling good Love about it. his murder. Love well, all he, of it. Mm. Sick the, Simper Tyrannus. The, the troubled 
Juneteenth is coming up. Let's uh, write it. <laughs> All right. They were now moving into our triple points round. The score is four to go. six. Did, did you say privil points? No, I believe I said I think triple he said points. triple. Oh. Triple, triple the, the machine points. is not that induced with White Claw right okay, now, so I, I think it's yeah. all good. So triple points, three points if we get it right, nine points if we get it exactly right. We're going to start with Justin on this one. Let's go. Come on. Uh, Justin, we are looking for... Could be like, wait, what was his name? Like Beauregard Southern? What was his name? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bo- Bozeman? Uh, uh, Sutherland Boswell. Uh, oh, wait, Sutherland I like, Boswell. I like, I like Beauregard. Uh, Beauregard, <laughs> Beauregard Southern. That's who, that, I mean, like, congratulations, you have a new name. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I want you to tell me a little bit about Tangatology. T-A-N-G-U-T. Tangatology. Oh, my God. Tangatology. So, uh, um, yeah, obviously, this is the study of uh, Tangin. You know, like whenever uh, you got a little like atomic warhead hits your tongue, you're like, ooh, tangy. Love it. Then you get a, you know, more, I don't know, I forget the hierarchy of the atomic warheads, but you go to like the mid one and you're like, ah, almost too tangy. Takes you years of study, but eventually you're going to eat that, 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 that ridiculous atomic warhead that is so tangy that it literally has made a man's tongue fall out of his mouth. That's a tangatologist. Okay. A study of tangin or uh, tanginess. No. Yeah. Man, you got this all backwards. Tangatology is that moment that, like, you're perfectly comfortable hanging off to the side. You're looking at your phone, but then you hear that beat. It goes, bum, 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 bum. Bum, the bum, little bum, drummer bum, boy bum, 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 bum. and you look up and there's this fucking girl across the way and she's looking at her phone and she hears it too and she looks up and the two of you like run off to a garden and grab uh, roses and put them in your mouth and shit and then you join and then the, everybody parts they get the fuck out of the way and the two of you like i don't know i think one of you your arms around the back and then you're like let's engage in some Tangology. I think that's the word that we're talking about today. Mm. Tang- tangata- tangatology. It's a tautology <laughs> of crushing <laughs> that push. <laughs> Hooray. Ole. Ole. Oh. Ole. So, uh, doing the tango. No. <laughs> I think I. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. You can't. So I guess like, <laughs> if I meant doing the <laughs> no, tango, somebody, I would have said Bryce, doing the on, tango. Come on, I listen give to a the very man. Specific listen scenario. to what the man said, Bryce. <laughs> That's tangatology. That, that you're at a party, you're on your phone, <laughs> somebody woman. starts playing the little drummer boy. The a uh, woman hears the same drum beat from the little drummer boy, and then you start crushing that push. <laughs> crushing that push, yeah, I'm gonna... yeah. That push. Also, yeah. uh, don't forget the part where the crowd separates. Also, I was oh, definitely, the crowd I was definitely separates. doing Hernando's Hideaway, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. Little drummer boy. Oh, 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 her, oh, her ran- Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, oh. wait, is that what the little drummer boy's called in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Let's all worship the drummer boy. He's such a little Christmas toy. <laughs> nope. Stop. Stop. <laughs> a Christmas toy, huh? Christmas toy. I was thinking of the. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. I mean, you know. <clears throat> God damn it. Man. I I think there's a lot of people who would agree with you. Oh and they would all separate as 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 you and I dance together, <laughs> do performing yeah. tangatology. I mean, if I, I mean, if we went to school, sure, yeah, we got better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, to recap, Justin said uh, it's the study of tangin or tanginess. Uh, Brian yeah. said it is the not even the study, just the act of. Uh, being being at a party, meeting a woman, hearing some little Trevor boy thing, they're dancing. Yeah, uh, side away, crushing fine. crushing that push, yeah. uh, <laughs> and at some point the crowd has separated, much like this the Red Sea part. The Red Sea, yeah. yeah. But let's not get religious. <laughs> okay, all right. Tangatology is 
the study of the culture, history, art, and language of the ancient Tangut people in the western Jia state of China, the predecessors of the Mongols. Man, I'd hate to be science Wait, right where, about now. Where were they at on atomic warheads? <laughs> probably, probably did not know much about atomic warheads, uh, given... What else uh, did they probably know, science? The, <laughs> given just, that just it was, keep on telling us about this culture. I'm not crazy. This was 1150, okay? All right. I am going to have to put this in the science. Well, shit. It's I mean, it's fucking late, 830 but, but you, on the Pacific. You don't need to... <laughs> This is, I mean, it is was that, just earlier this, today. This is why we're doing the tango, <laughs> Justin. You and this I is, you are know, perfectly in sync as we listen I to think, Little Drummer I Boy. I think the worst <laughs> atomic warhead was the red one. Pa, ra, was pa, positive. Pum. Pum. All right, I'm going to put this in the science machine. <laughs> All right. Uh, giving him three more points. We because he was talking about people. Brian has gotten the points. <laughs> what, what, what was yours again, Justin? Hanginess. Oh, a study of uh, atomic warheads. Yeah, ain't those you never had those? They're very tart. They're That's tart. Right. Oh Rob shit! I was thinking of tart. Not You're thinking tangy. of tartology. Fuck. Yeah. God damn it. J. Robert Rob. Oppenheimer looked upon the explosion there at Trinity Base and said, "I am become death." That's a tangy puss. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was what he said. Exactly. He's like, "I have become death. I should make a candy." <laughs> <laughs> and that man's name was Albert Einstein. All right. Uh, second to last question in our uh, for our three points. And we're going to start with uh, Brian on yes. this one. Brian, we're going to start Ready. with you on this one. I would like you to tell me a little bit about... Gelotology. G-E-L-O-T. Gelotology. Oh, oh damn. yeah. Damn. Mm, gelotology. Uh, man. Um, uh. it's butts. It's butts. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's all about gelatinous mass getting that gelatinous ass. It's gelatology. Gelatology. Okay. That's, that's that's what that's what Paula Abdul was singing about. Uh. And how did that go again? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she had that rap. She yeah, the said. <clears throat> yeah, famous <laughs> rapper Paula Abdul. Go. I mean, wait. If you want, <laughs> only if, if you, want. you want. If you would wait, no, like, I don't have no, no, I don't no know. Oh, Please, dance monkey. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> she said, uh, "Hey, everyone!" Like there was that. There was that. Uh, A breakdown. At the end of of CDs, there would be hidden tracks. Oh, sure. And then yeah, there was this that. is a famous <laughs> thing that happened with CDs. A, a, a famous hidden track was like after ninety nine tracks. Uh, her voice came on and she goes, hey, I just want you all to know <laughs> that <laughs> MC Scat Cat was performing some gelatology, <laughs> by which I mean the study of my... And then it got cut off, but scholars largely assume she meant her backside. <laughs> See? So it's but that a cartoon got in that ass. Parentheses, I, I, I mean, cartoon it's sex. It's certainly implied, heavily implied. Also, her follow-up I mean, album, it is, it I definitely is heavily got implied by that cat, was yeah. a bit of an answer to it. Some people thought, as a matter of fact, her follow-up to that follow-up, in which she graphically describes, oh, no, uh, <laughs> like, like, uh, uh. <clears throat> You like to hold me against the wall. <laughs> and then MC Scat Cat says, that's right, I do. And then she goes, you like to caress me until my panties fall. And he goes, mm. yeah, because I'm about to have sex with you from behind. Um, anyway. And I think that was the end of the track. And I think that was how <laughs> yeah. the end of the, the CD yeah. even ended right there, too. All right, Justin, gelatology. <laughs> oh, I think it's probably about a gelatin. Uh, so, uh, which of course is horse bones. So I think it's probably like a horse bone related study about like that first dude that looked at a horse and said, damn, that shit would be tasty. And the guy next to him was like, what? Like horse meat? And like, that's fucked no, up. And he's like, even. nah, dog, that's fuck it. Throw, take the horse meat, throw that shit in the yard. I don't give a, and not my yard, fucking my enemy's yard. 
Like that's, <laughs> MC's that's cat fucking cat down garbage. The road. He's yeah, busy MC's sick with all that cool yeah. in a weird bestiality cartoon uh, crossover. Yeah, and, and MC Scat Cat's fucking have a bunch of horse meat thrown on his fucking yard, and he's like, and I like to smoke. Because he was having another conversation. But like, uh, but yeah, that dude was like, no, the real fucking tasty shit is if we grind those bones, fucker. Like, he's like, why did you use that language? He's like, I'm just fucking into it. You ever heard of Bill Cosby? Like, and that was the end of the conversation. Uh, and that that CD ended right there. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that famous MC Skycat oh, no. line. So you were walking on your bones. own <laughs> 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 see. Making desserts is a matter of fact. I grind the horse bones and gelatins. A fact. Gelatology. It's his cat cat. All right, to recap our answers, Brian has said it's butts with the parenthetical of cartoon cat sex. Oh my god. And Justin has said gelatin slash horse bones. I feel like this is the moment where it's like we pause everything and me and Justin look at each other like we did it again, didn't we? (laughs) Here we are. (laughs) It's a living. (laughs) (laughs) Gelatology. Gelatology is the study of Humor and laughter. I think that's a very easy point to Brian Brushwood. Yes. What? I mean, butts are funnier. Also, the idea he of was MC just Scat Cat <laughs> talking about sex, Paula Abdul having, get, oh, having oh, anal MC sex Scat with Cat MC Scat too. Cat. You, you're not horse, horse boat. You're not like, horse boat. He, he screamed, I like to smoke. <laughs> and then he made up his own <laughs> opposites attract intelligence song. <laughs> right. I mean, did, did you notice that Scat's in his name? <laughs> <laughs> I did no- I did notice that. Notice no wonder. That. <laughs> like, where do you think they did it? <laughs> That's the first His question. Name's That's not the first question. MC Baby Cat. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Final round. Final round. This one is for uh, fuck it. Ten points. It's still anybody's game right. right now. Brian has got All ten right. points. Mm. And Justin's got six. Laughter, huh? Jesus. Laughter and humor. Oh, we should figure that out sometime. Don't fucking brag about it. <laughs> All right. We're going to start with, uh, because he's pulling up the rear, Justin. <laughs> MC Scat Cat. Romney Malco shows up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Justin, I'd like you to tell me about the study. By the of- way, we we actually we we have to plan that. We got to get Romney on when the movie's coming out on VOD because apparently we were still in it when it was still streaming, uh, or when it was uh, doing the festival circuit. So hell's yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta put a word out to Romney. Yeah, we'll figure we'll, we'll do that. We'll figure that out. Uh, Justin, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about velology. V e l o l velology. Velology. All right. So this one is about mostly Armenian drug dealers because, as we all know, it's only Armenian drug dealers and Cameron and many of the other diplomats that wear velour. (laughs) And that's what this is the study of, is what is the intersection between the Armenian drug dealer and Cameron uh, 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 where where do we go from there? Oh, they wear velour. Now we can go forward. Velour track suits, mostly, but velour as a, uh, a fabric that was very hot in the late 90s and early 2000s specifically. Man, you're so close. It's not about the velour itself. It's about the speed, the trajectory with which it became very popular among those drug dealers. And then the speed with which it went to shit. It's about the speed of the Lamborghinis they were driving. It's about the speed they were snorting. Uh, it, it's about speed. Like methamphetamine, speed. Uh, yeah, or, or actual velocity. 
Right, so I'm, it's about when you're uh, doing so much. I'm gonna have to make you pay. Also, it's about the moon. Also, it's about Selena. Also, it's also it's about Paula Abdul getting hammered by MC Skaggs and Sandy Bullock. You can't earn the territory. You don't earn that without making a story. If you don't make a story, I can't write them all down. I get everything else. No, you don't. You gotta pick one. It's also about GI Joe and Cobra. You need to pick something. Brian, Brian has now entered the strategy in this game where he just starts listing words like he's a fucking AliExpress listing. Game theory, Brushwood. Find his way into 2020. No, I need to. If you're not gonna have a funny story to make it all the way there, I'm gonna need one. Uh, one topic. Uh, no, no, no. I actually, I think it's bicycles. Bicycles. Okay. Yep. yep. Mm. Because I know that here in Austin, there's something called the Veloway. V e l o w a y, uh, and it's just mm. a place to ride your bicycle. So I'll say Veloway. Uh, uh, oh, that's clever. Velo. Ve I like Velo to study ve velology. 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 Oh, oh, oh. MC Skatka, what are you doing here? Velologist no, no. uh, biking away because you know that they enjoy their studies. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, on your oh, MC Skatka. Get set. Study for your velology <laughs> exam. Oh my gosh. Abraham Gandalf, thank you for that reminder. <laughs> what are you doing at this subway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call Mayor John Cena right now. Uh, oh, gonna... wait, he's right there. You fucking didn't notice because you couldn't see him. Couldn't see him. You couldn't see him. Well, you could see the tuna I, on his I lip. Can't see yeah, tuna. You could just see a glob of tuna <laughs> just like precariously levitating in the middle of this suburban subway. I forgot to mention that for some reason. John Cena's invisible. You can't see him. <laughs> you can't <laughs> see him. That's his whole bit. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. So, to recap, uh, Brian's answer was the study of bikes. And Justin's <laughs> answer <laughs> Justin's answer was the cultural intersection between Armenian drug dealers and Velour, as well as Cameron. All yeah, right. Cameron as well. Yeah. Oh, By Cameron. the way, that's the second Cameron reference I've made on Night Attack shows today within 24 <laughs> hours. Cameron's getting some play. Oh, oh, man. All right. Velology is the study and collection of... Vehicle tax discs. Sorry? Uh, in America, they say are... Say that. Say that slower. <laughs> the study and collection of vehicle tax discs. Uh, these may be your plate stickers. These might be your... Discs? Uh, uh, that's also in other vehicle countries. There's tax discs. discs. Oh, it's, a, it, it's the shit you put on your license plate to let everybody know that you paid taxes. Right. Right. Uh, in the UK, this... I got, oh, maybe the disc is a sticker. It's a round sticker, possibly. No one is quite sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, scientists are still getting to the bottom We're, of it. It <laughs> might be a sticker I'm or still trying maybe to it's out. A, a, a blood of the firstborn. I mean, I, 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 I'm still trying to figure out how MC Scat Cat would rap about these. I, I, I got nothing. Hopefully he doesn't figure out something that sounds like discs. All right. I'm going to put this into the science machine. <laughs> but I think this will be a pretty quick one. Here it goes. Click. Beep. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, that was super quick. Wow. Wow. Uh, and, oh, it very quickly gave me the answer with 20 points. Brian is our winner. Oh, yes, Brian. Oh, that was a very fair one. The tax discs, the tax discs. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> he pays the tax disc in when I'm in UK. <laughs> Se secretly, no. Are no. you gonna no? Don't rhyme. Don't yeah, rhyme. No. We're not. We're yeah, not gonna take there. the rhyme yeah. after UK. Uh, oh God! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. See, this is how Justin. This is how I know we were meant to tang tangoology. I'm just saying <laughs> where I'm calling you. Out. I'm pulling you off the field. I'm Southern Beauregard, and you're not gonna fucking make that play. <laughs> Thank you again. Southern Beauregard. <laughs> Uh, thank you to I'm legendary West Texas high school football coach Southern Beauregard. Boy, I know you wanted to rhyme something after UK, but we all know where that's gonna go. Hank, hit the pine, boy. We're gonna live to see another day. Southern Beauregard. <laughs>
<laughs> my favorite right. part of that whole bit was the fact that Bryce knew you were about to say the name again and had his finger yeah. on the trigger for the echo. You couldn't <laughs> see it during the name chant corner, but I was like this the whole fucking time. <laughs> right? yeah, my button. Thank you to mad scientist Kel. <laughs> They're boring, out. They, stop saying it. I can't reach it. I'm trying to outro the bit. Thank you to Mad Scientist Kel who wrote this game uh, and had the great idea for it. If you've got an idea for a game and you'd like us to play it in the middle oh. section of this program, which is what this has been, email it to us. Mail, M A I L, at nightattack.tv is the email address. That's where you go for this portion of the show. <laughs> Hot googly dig dog. What yeah. say we do a little bit of diamond time? Ooh. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian, Diamond Time is where you shout out your project right here on the show. We are a, co- a community-driven program, and that means that you, the community, get a piece of it at the very end. We begin with, uh, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, go to our Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash Diamond Club. Sticky post, top of the page. First one is, I am very anonymous. It says, tell Bryce his fly is undone. Bryce, I'm going to tell you that, but you got to stand up and show everybody whether or not I'm going to show everybody. Prove that it's not undone. Uh, you got a license to sell hot dogs there? No, <laughs> looks like you're good. There you go. Uh, there you go. Next up, BioCow says. Not the most awkward thing on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> BioCow says, get some stickers for a dollar. Step one, go to patreon.com slash BioCow. Step two, become a patron at any level, even one dollar. Step three, receive stickers. Patreon.com slash posts slash three eight. Two six one four five one. I swear to God, just when I think I could trust anyone, uh, uh, he's got uh, cool stickers. Check him out. Uh, he'll mail them right to you. Patreon.com/slash Uh, uh, slutty ginger ninety seven writes. Oh, boobies. Yeah, no, that's legit. <clears throat> Uh, and by the way, uh, uh receiving uh two points at the bottom of Diamond Time today. Papa Sparky, all caps, let Josie shave her eyebrows. I mean, truthfully, I'm fine with uh, that. No, 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 no. Uh, Brian, this is I'm a not, catch I'm, and kill. I'm not, I'm not it's a catch fine. and kill. I'm not it's fine a catch and kill. It. No, Come on. I, it's, look, we're I catching? have professionals. We're to... catching okay. and we're killing. Right, got it. That's what we're doing. Hey, Bryce, I'll bet that you had one sleepy mail inbox this week. I bet nobody wrote anything interesting in our mailbag. I guess we'd have to open it up to find out. Yes. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. In the Diamond Club? Sounds grand. Super grand. This is the part of the show where we read your emails that you sent into mail, M A I L at Night Attack, to be read on this portion of the show. Uh, what should we? S- I have like nor- regular emails, but we also got a lot of emails about happy hour. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm comfy going either way. Do you want okay. you, you, you want to? Uh, you had an interesting experience where I assume there was like just a flood of stuff, and you had to figure out right. like why is this happening? Well, and also I only checked this email box. I, it's not on my phone. It's not like Gmail or anything. So I only check it. Yeah. On Tuesday mornings, and then I see 20 new emails all saying, well, "Happy hour, please don't die." So um, I'm gonna recap all of these very, very briefly because we've got a bunch of them. Thank you, everybody. Will. Yeah, I mean, it, look, uh, I would say go ahead and uh, uh, unless you've already vetted all of them, like you know, just just give us a, a few that summarize the bunch. I think that would be fine. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the... Even even just based on subject line. Yeah. Um, I mean, as Selena once said, I am the moon, which is also a star. So therefore. Definitely count me the same as the moon. It's me, Selena. The end. <laughs> That's a matter of fact. <laughs> and that was Mayor John Cena <laughs> in, uh, impersonating his favorite artist, MC Scat Cat. <laughs> it's a weird thing for him to do. So uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. But you couldn't <laughs> see him, so he snuck up on you. Yeah, and the, the smoke, obviously. The smoke ring. Oh. Um uh, so, uh, in general, the the broad, the broad strokes here are people really like happy hour and people really understand if uh, it has to be pared back or if it has to change what it looks like. There was some talk of having uh, various hosts, uh, some some support of if it ends up happening less per week or if it ends up behind the Patreon um, uh, <laughs> Sorry, paywall. Sorry, the idea. What town are you living in where John Cena is your invisible mayor? <laughs> Just every town USA, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Main Street? Hello. White picket uh, fences? Uh, not Wall Street, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Subway sandwich shop? So. Exactly, yeah. 
Uh, so, so, so a lot um, of a lot of people said nice things about uh, Happy Hour. Um, yeah, people are people are very appreciative of having done it and are very understanding of if it had to, for whatever reason, be pared pared down or change in in, in some way. Um, and we have some more specific uh, uh, feedback that I don't know that we need to get into on the air, but uh, people liked guests showing up randomly they like the idea they like it being random they like the behind the scenes talk uh they like your choice of of random music brian um so so that's a, oh, a, a feather that's in your cap yeah um and so yeah I, I i'd say um we we got a lot of support from having done it and a lot of support for whatever you decide to do in the future Oof, that's 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 more approval than i'm accustomed to well, I mean, I, I think that, that, that that's that's its own. Uh, I, I think that that's that's clear for what an audience is saying, which is that like, all right, uh, this is not something where if it went away, we would riot, right? We want like the goal is uh, to keep the output of Night Attack higher than it was before, which was once a week, right? Right. And so if if we gave them much more than that then that means that they would probably be happy if we did more than once a week, but maybe one hour every single day, although it's been enjoyable, is not necessarily something that people would like scream and yell and cling to. Because like, I, I think for me, the, 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 the feedback that would come back that would complicate things the most, it would be like, I fucking love five day a week, one hour more than I like this thing that happens on Tuesday. So whatever you do, don't go away from that, uh, which we did not get, which I think, you know, gives us uh, gives us some wiggle room to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and apparently like not a universal um, putting anything behind a paywall would literally cause a riot type of thing. Right. We actually got a few people saying that they ended up being patrons because of going from one day, one show a week to six shows a week. So. Uh, that's also a uh, really, really great support. Yeah, you know, uh, years ago, I, I ended up in my in, in the deepest trenches of my Google Drive a, uh, a week or two ago for some reason, and I found some old doc of... Um, you found MC Scat Cat waiting for you? Well, and I won't talk about that one on the air because uh, I keep my personal <laughs> life separate from the from the podcast. But uh, uh, no, it was... Um, you drew me as hentai, and then I... <laughs> Keep going, keep going. I'm sorry, I stopped it. <laughs> In any case, uh, the <laughs> uh, one of it was, it, and I had I found some doc that I made years ago of like things that it would be nice for to happen with Night Attack, and uh, one of the top ones and the most rated, the most difficult to happen would be like. What if we did a second night attack per week, right? Um, and so in a world where you guys just spent the past two months or so doing uh, six uh, shows per week. Um, All of a sudden, the idea of only doing two uh, sounds a little less crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think realistically, the idea that we do a daytime show that goes for two hours, like that's realistic like because it's been very easy for us to carve out one hour five days a week so if we did an extra you know an extra little thing there i think mm -hmm. you know uh, we could probably just like the only difference would be that we would just stretch it out a little bit more than we do now and you know even if it's not two hours it's an hour and 15 minutes i feel like people would dig it yep. yeah and 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 i i you know i we got some feedback that people liked you know having much more content but I, I would broadly wonder if, you know, having less output would make the density of, of the programs a little, you know, a little more easier to do, right? We won't hit the after show and all go, man, didn't we do a lot of Night Attack today and, and wrap it up really early? immediately go, uh. Right. <laughs> um, and it makes it easier to even do even more stuff with special guests or what have you. So yeah. uh, thank you, everybody, for your feedback. I'm going to send all of this stuff over to the guys in an easy uh, to read portion. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing that I've loved about Night Attack is that it's been such a vibrant space. Like, not really since BB Live Show even uh, has there been just a place where people wanted to interact and wanted to come on and to the point where it, it kind of has become almost its own, like not 
a, a problem in logistics, not a problem in terms of uh, uh, the the interaction from the audience. But we've had like as soon as we get to a point where where Will Harris from London wants to call into the happy hour, but we already have four people on and it's going to be a pain in the ass for Brian to try to figure that out on the fly 30 minutes into the show. Yeah. You know, you're on to something like uh, that's good. It's good when like it, it, we've created this environment where people want to come on the, the, the solution to that is all right, let's figure out a vibrant, like now that we have a vibrant place, let's figure out the best way that we can work people in and have people be a part of it. Because like the one thing that you can't fake is people giving a shit about that space. And, and people and I give, think, give a shit about that space, which is rad. I think that's one of the things that makes me happiest is that like early on, you know, we'd tweet it out and put the word out or whatever, but now it's like we almost deliberately have just been showing up and it's kind of awesome to show up and there's 200 people just hanging out like, uh, oh, are you guys here? Yeah, well, I guess we're here. I guess we'll, uh, I don't know. Talk some low stakes, whatever's on our mind. Yeah, I mean it's 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 amazing. The I, voice I of it. our audience is very funny. Also. No, 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 that's us. That's that's our voice. Oh, that's, okay. That's, actually, right. that was Selena talking to MC Scat Cat while <laughs> invisibly John Cena was jerking off. Ooh, mm, I, mm, I have to go. Where do you think that tuna comes from? <laughs> and then when he jizzes, it's. <laughs> it comes out in that rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have some other emails here. Thank you, everybody, right, for sending in that feedback. <laughs> uh, we've got this email from, let me make sure I get the name, Jacob. Jacob, thank you very much for sending this. Jacob writes, uh, Brian, and he spelled it with a Y, Juice Tin, uh, like the drink, Brioche, yeah. I think that one's me, and Bonnie, spelled That's correctly. You, yeah. uh, so I've spoken with some of you before, <laughs> and I've given... A small love letter to Modern Rogue and Diamond Club to Brian. Message Justin about being about college being a sham and absolutely have never talked to Bonnie or Bryce. I teach martial arts to kids, and the one thing that my team has been doing is holding Zoom classes to keep some consistency for the families. We have kept our oh, Super Summer Series is. going. I think I know what this is. That's right, because I see your reply here. Uh, Super Summer Series going, an event where we dress like pirates and say, aye, aye, Captain, for a class, which is a thousand percent better than saying yes, sir, and my favorite. Today and tomorrow is Crazy Hair Day. He wrote this on uh, Monday, so I guess today was also that. I'm sure you can see where this is going. I've attached images of what I did in about five minutes today and would love tips on how to do it better for tomorrow or for Halloween. Uh, I've got shitty DSC pomade and Johnny Slick's nice wax pomade. I don't normally put my face online, but this was worth it. And I do see an email here from uh, one Brian A. Brushwood with uh, some very helpful tips on the product and technique to use. Uh, yeah, number one, a commendable effort. That was actually pretty close. Um, uh, if, if you want the ends to be pointy and sharp, what you do is get yourself some texturizing shears and just chop, 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 so that it's thinned out at the end. And then basically use uh, some thick pomade and then uh, uh, to, to kind of get everything vertical and then uh, use uh, either beeswax or some kind of hair wax to make discrete spikes on everything. Here we go. And uh, if you if you want a video tutorial, crazy video game here in nine minutes is what you should look up for on YouTube uh, from one of Brian's early Brian Brushwood on the road. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. You want to know what? I thought you did that uh, when you were into scam school, but I guess this has just been your answer to that email for, for even longer than that. Yeah. Number 08. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, pre-scam school. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, smokes. Wow. Uh, all right. We got a few more here. Let's uh, go. This email is from Joe. Joe says, good evening, gentlemen and lady. Thank you for the discussion on happy hour a bit ago about skepticism. Uh, 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 I was staring at a drawer full of spoons, putting away dishes, and my mind wandered to the psychic spoon benders from TV as a kid and how efforts of James Randi came to debunk so many of these folk. I then got curious. If a real-life magneto appeared in the world, is there a mechanism in the scientific debunking process where eventually people would throw their hands up in the air and say, well, I guess we have to admit he's doing something science can't explain yet. Apparently, he can manipulate metal with his mind somehow. Or would there always be a contrary view? Would he always be scrutinized as a sham until science proved what was going on either way? Thank you, Joe. There's well, a, 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 a reminder about the Million Dollar Challenge from the James Randi Educational Foundation that is not, they do not pay you out when science proves you've done something right. They pay you out when their scientific experiment 
you can beat. So you only need to beat one scientific experiment that is engineered by the James Randi Educational Foundation, which makes it such an awesome thing. Because really, all you have to do is win one bar bet, like to prove that you actually have these powers. So literally, if if real life Magneto came out and said, and and I will speak with some authority, having intern there and known uh, uh the guy who organized the challenges uh of uh, andrew main f- uh, for years if if they came out and said all right yeah here's a bunch of cutlery and uh uh we are going to put it in a gigantic uh gymnasium and there's going to be a curtain between you and where the cutlery is uh have the cutlery get from from where it is anywhere it behind this curtain to where you are now. Uh, uh, if he got it there, they'd cough up that cash. Uh, yeah. And the question was always like, well, <clears throat> what if somebody, what if somebody wins? And, and uh, James Randi's answer was always, well, if they did, then by definition, we, even if we didn't understand how it was happening, it would be such an important contribution to the sciences of the world that it would definitely be worth, oh, I don't know, say at least a million dollars, you know? So, so like there was no fear, like, like, like if you could do it, then, then certainly it was worth doing. And also there's a number of things in science that we still don't know how or why they work. We just yeah. know that they work. Uh, uh, for example, of, uh, anesthetics or uh, anesthesiology. Yeah, anesthesiology yeah, is, yeah. Like, like we, we, we it's a, an art more than a science. Right. Like we we don't know why it works, but we know that we're allowed to cut people open and they don't seem to complain, and then we sew them back up somehow, and it's magic as far as we understand. Yeah. Uh, 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 the 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 awesome part about that is uh, the 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 J Ref Million Dollar Challenge is that like you would be amazed how garbage the people that come in <laughs> like like it's always this dubbish shit of like i know where water is and they're like okay cool here's three different jars with covers on them where's the water a story and I they're heard. like uh i don't know i don't know <laughs> Do this one and then it's like okay you didn't fucking know all there's, right get the fuck there's out definitely of here. a story i heard of somebody walks in with a broom and he sets the broom down and he goes watch this and he kind of pushes down, like in my mind, he's David Blaine. He's so like, watch, yeah. watch, watch, watch. And it's like, imagine him kind of doing a churning motion with the broom and yeah. then getting the broom balanced and then letting go and then walking away, <laughs> giving that amazed look to the camera. <laughs> like that, yeah. that was the whole thing. The thing teens <laughs> were doing on TikTok six months ago. Oh yeah, that's right. The broom challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 so, yeah, I mean, uh, to, to to answer the email, uh, this would not have to be a scientific consensus. If you can win the bar bet with James Randi, you get a million dollars. And that's that to me, if people didn't know that, that's the reason why that challenge is awesome. Because trust me, if anyone had anywhere close to provable impressive powers, they would catch that cool million real fucking quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two more emails. We got one here from Renaigu. Renaigu says, hi, Renaigu here. I was wondering why the boys were swearing so much. This email came in a few weeks ago. What the fuck is he talking about? I don't know what the fuck's up with this. He's pissing on my, uh, on my shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, ass, ass penis is fucking what I would say to that immediately because um, maybe, those are may- curse words. Maybe... You know what it, uh, I, I mean, there was definitely in our NSFW days, like we were told, number one, we were told to curse liberally. Then we were told, psych, don't Almost curse Almost immediately. <laughs> no, we don't like, that's too much cursing. Yeah, please yeah. don't. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Also, I mean, as, soon, as soon as black guys were on screaming the N-word, then it was like, ah, maybe not <laughs> maybe for not. this tech network. God, that was such a great episode. All right, there you go, Renike. We got one last email here from Ryan. Uh, Ryan's subject is how I found Night Attack. We keep reading people's uh, uh, stories of how they found Night Attack. We asked, I think, uh, a few weeks ago for people to send in some of the crazier stories. Uh, we, yeah. got a, we got a little bit of one here from Ryan. Ryan says, hey, Night Attack crew. 
here's the story of how I found your show and the Diamond Club as a whole. It was, a, it was around 2014, and I was 19, working for a mortuary as a groundskeeper and member of burial staff. And as you can bet from a job like this. <laughs> Is this from Guillermo? <laughs> Guillermo! As you Are you writing Night Attack again? <laughs> as you can bet from a job like that, there's a bit of open time while cutting grass, digging, and prepping grave sites for services. So earbuds and audio entertainment are a must. I got bored of the music on my iPod and couldn't afford ad-free music streaming, so I decided to try these podcast things. I kept seeing uh, them on my phone and on Google Play Music. Jury was a top slot for recommended shows, so I said, okay, I'll give it a listen. Holy cow. Yeah. It was an episode where he was talking about a previous professor from J school, and I found him somewhat abrasive but relatable, so I kept going. <laughs> He's the perfect. host of the show. That's right. That's, no, no, no. That's if I were if I were single, that's what I put on my Tinder profile. <laughs> I should put that on mine. Maybe I'll get some somewhat time. abrasive, but relatable. But relatable. Uh, he made mention of another show he did, so I went and checked that out. Holy crap, that was a great choice. The first episode I listened to <laughs> of. <laughs> Good choice. Good, Good choice. choice. The first episode I listened to of Night Attack was part of the saga of Hitler's dice. Oh, Man. my God. I remember when we pulled out Hitler's dice for Night Attack, at that point, Hitler's dice was still a, a like dusted off. Old. Yeah, we yeah. had to dust yeah, yeah, it yeah, off. Yeah. And I, think, I think Hitler's dice might have been like the seventh or eighth episode of NSFW that we did. Right. Wow. And, okay. Yes. And that's that's very early jury too. Like that mm -hmm. is that is like uh, uh, me just building the studio and deciding I needed to start doing more shit in it. So I did jury. So uh, a good call. Like that is that is not him saying that he did not like the show Jury as pe many people remember it as a more <laughs> polished show. That was garbage. <laughs> and I'm I'm shocked that Google Play was recommending it. <laughs> Uh, the so the first episode I listened to was the saga of Hitler's dice. Needless to say, it didn't look good when I started laughing out loud in the middle of a damned cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you explain it, where the like 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 you have your earbuds in, so you're talking too loud, and so it's like, what's going on? You're like, ah, you're talking about Hitler, Hitler's yeah. dice. <laughs> you know, you believe in supernatural stuff, right? You remember that old movie? Yeah. Funniest oh. shit I ever heard. <laughs> Hitler. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, you guys brought levity to my life uh, when I was young and uh, 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 working in a somewhat dark industry. And I'm so glad you guys have kept such a good show, community, and friendship over the years. And I'm glad to be a listener. Cheers, Brian, Justin, Bonnie, and Bryce. Ryan. Thank oh, you, Ryan. Man. That's very sweet. That really it makes bad. my day. What a yeah. sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, if you have an email you would like us to read here on this third and final portion of our show, send it into mail at nightattack.tv, the email address M-A-I-L at nightattack.tv, and we'll read it here on the third and last portion of the show, which is what this was. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I was about to look down and be like, uh, already? But then I realized we've gone longer than usual. Uh, uh, hey, Justin, what did we learn today? Uh, well, Brian, uh, we learned that... Uh, uh, your, your your daughter's got some fucking crazy ideas about what she's gonna do with her face. Uh, but it, but but if she marries John Cena, at least her children will only be half visible. Uh, we learn that the study of wine is also only in a million. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got something about the tango. I don't know. Uh, hey, we love you guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Die to fire. Also, congratulations to our bit boss with 7,002 bits. Holy shit. It's Goddamn. Jordan DeMoss. Goddamn. Jordan DeMoss. That's a boss. Justin Robert Young. Every or like Jordan you DeMost. I get so sad that I want to drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack, 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 I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>